This podcast is brought to you by Kempower, the reliable, quick, and scalable EV charging solutions for everyone and everywhere. And Star Charge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world and is also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage. Hello and welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. It is the winter holiday season here for me, for a lot of us, probably for you, and a lot of us are out on the roads, making trips to eat food, spend times with friends and family, and many of you are charging your EVs along the way. Whether you're new or old to EV charging, you're building habits. You probably have researched how to charge your EV, but maybe you're just winging it. If you have free access to public charging, it's actually quite likely that you're spending two times as long at EV chargers than other people, and that's pretty crazy. Welcome back to the Out of Spec Podcast. I'm your host, Francie, and I hope you're not topping off at an EV charging station right now unless it's totally necessary. Thank you for plugging in with me today for today's episode. Let's get into it. Oh, also, by the way, if you're enjoying these podcasts, whether you're watching on YouTube X or streaming the audio on your preferred podcast platform, I would so appreciate it if you would consider subscribing so you don't miss our consistent coverage of this ever-evolving space. Leave a review if you've been enjoying listening, you know, five stars, let us know, and even share your favorite episode so far with someone that you think could use a bit of spark in their day. Back to the topic at hand, the pretty crazy number of minutes that folks are spending using free charging. So DC fast chargers, they're different from the at-home charging that you or someone you know has in their garage if you're an EV driver. They're out in the wild, they are fast of course, and they're used to add a lot of range to your EV very quickly. Ideally, they're only used on road trips when you really need them or if, you know, that's your only way of charging, mainly because they are more expensive than at-home charging, as you'll quickly realize. They put more stress on the electrical grid, which is something I'm really interested in studying more and more and covering more and more with the podcast. And they also put more stress on your electric vehicle's battery, which can increase the degradation rate of your battery. So factoring all of this in, that these are what people have to use to get from A to B when they're needing to go somewhere to get that quick charge reliably, which is also sometimes an issue with public fast charging. It's important to keep these fast chargers as available as possible to those who need it, like those on a road trip stuck between here and there. Some interesting news that we came across, an interesting stat, an interesting study, was about customer behavior at fast chargers. And this came from the Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy's Vehicle Technologies Office. Specifically, they found that free fast chargers or free charging incentivizes what we think is poor etiquette on public charging. And this is a topping off behavior, as I call it. Whether these folks have free access to charging or the chargers are free for whatever reason, it leads drivers to use DC fast charging frequently and they're using it to charge all the way up to 100%. It takes significantly longer to charge your EV battery up to 100%. If you've ever done it, you know that. As your battery gets fuller and fuller, it becomes more resistant to the energy coming into it. So you get a quicker charge from a low state of charge, showing up near zero, five, 10%, up to 60, 70, 80%. And that's when you should leave, or else you're spending way more time at a charger, probably spending more money, and you probably don't need to be there. You probably have enough to get to where you're going. Not only is this using this public resource perhaps excessively, but it's also, like we said, worse for your EV's, EV's battery, and I have to think worse for you to be sitting there. But what this research has found was that a lack of incentive to unplug exists in the EV space, in the public EV charging space, even if the battery is completely full as idle fees aren't really much of a thing in the industry, as we'll get into in a second. So we have all seen it, probably, but more than just anecdotes of people sitting around at chargers and charging up to 100%, and I know sometimes it's necessary, but we're talking about this interesting stat. The objective data supports this claim. The Department of Energy looked at 2.4 million fast charges between June 2020 and June 2023, three years. What they found was that paid charges had an average time spent of 42 minutes, not the best, not the worst, and an average energy, energy delivered of 22 kilowatt hours. So looking at the free charges, the average time that people spent at chargers was 78 minutes. 
The average time to take a grocery store run is not 78 minutes. The average length of a feature film is between 75 and 180 minutes. This has to beg the question, how much is your time really worth? Why do you need 100%? Can 80% not get you where you need to go? Of course, there are consequences to others too. The stat means that folks are hanging out twice as long getting free charging compared to paid which means that congestion is more likely, lines are more likely, and frustration from other EV drivers is more likely. I also have to think that these folks sitting there for that long, I mean, how much happiness does this bring them? Again, is free charging for that long really worth your sweet time? So the problem is clear. Free charging is incentivizing pretty gnarly behavior at EV charging sites. Next steps, how do we address the problem? Perhaps we normalize the use and addition of idle fees on public networks. The Tesla supercharger network has idle and congestion fees, and I covered this back on a podcast in November. I'll uh, link that in the show notes. But to reiterate some information from that podcast, like I said, Tesla has idle and congestion fees based on how full a site is. EVgo has toyed with the idea of idle fees, but it's not listed anywhere on their website. Electrify America has stated that idle fees may be imposed for parking time after your charging session has ended, but it doesn't get specific about when. And they point to looking at the app or the specific specific sites or the station itself. Charge points, since they are independently owned, these charging stations, these chargers, it's up to the owner to set not only the fee for charging, but also any idle fees. So they really say, this is determined by the host. You're probably just going to have to check the price on the station or in the app before starting a charge to see if idle fees are a thing at that location. We could change also every fee free charger to be very inexpensive add any cost, even just a little bit, to alter it from free to still paid, but cheap. A bit of consumer psychology there. I don't know. That might work. But these seem more like a band-aid overall. And I wonder if they don't really fully solve the problem. What do you think? I'd genuinely like to hear your ideas or what you've read or heard about certain behaviors or ways that networks or site hosts have tried to incentivize a more communal, less charger hogging behavior. Free charging plans from manufacturers obviously play into this, and it's not just the networks having free chargers. Many manufacturers offer a certain amount of free DC fast charging when you buy a new EV, and we understand why. We're incentivizing EV sales. Not really blaming anyone, but we're just seeing the consequences of our own actions. So we can see examples of like a thousand kilowatt hours on a certain charging network, or even free charging for one, two, or three years on certain public fast charging networks. There are many free charging plans offered today still by charging networks and automakers through their charging partnerships. For instance, on Electrify America, you can find some free charging incentives with Audi, BMW, Ford, Genesis, Hyundai, Kia, Lucid, Mercedes, Porsche, and of course, Volkswagen. As for EVgo, with the purchase or lease of a model year 23 or 24 Cadillac Lyric, you can get two years of unlimited charging. With the purchase or lease of the 2023 Toyota BZ4X, you can get one year of unlimited complimentary charging. With the sale or lease of a new 2023 Nissan Aria, you can also get a year of free charging. It's interesting. It's there. But no matter how you slice it, I don't think it's justifiable on the large scale in the general sense to sit at a fast charger for 78 minutes. And maybe that's a controversial take, but I don't think so. But free charging is a perk offered throughout the industry. And it also happens when a network is down. We've definitely advocated for this, like when Electrify America or whoever loses connection to the telecommunications, don't shut the network down, make it free. That's different. That's a backup plan for their problem. This is more free charging in general. So can we blame the folks for squeezing every last drop out of that offer that came with their EV, which are generally a more premium priced product anyways? Because it does work. It's a motivator to buy certain EVs. Free charging is proven to be a value add, a marketing success for many customers. Not everyone has at-home charging options. We wish we all did. Some of us live in apartments. And Qmerit and ChargePoint have been partners with automakers to subsidize at-home charging for new EV owners, which is cool. You know, I've seen that with Subaru, Toyota, Chevy, to name just a few. So again, there's a value add. But at what cost? If we're building out a whole new way of transportation, being very intentional with how Consumers will behave with this new service, with the infrastructure, should be examined and analyzed and then use that information to plan how we build these systems up. And I'm not talking about controlling or micromanaging how we do it, but 
there's already tons of consumer behavior psychology stuff going on in the world. We should think about it when it comes to public charging. Because it's difficult to blame owners for using the perks of their new EV. And sometimes we just wish folks knew better, considering the damage to their battery, their effects on others who are trying to charge. But it's difficult to inform everyone. We know that dealers don't always get to educate everyone on everything when it comes to their EV. It's also hard to even convince someone that their charging behavior might be harmful to them and others. I think we talked about some options here of idle fees or congestion fees or turning free charging into cheap, cheap charging as a means of alleviating this issue. But people are still using free chargers for twice as long as the paid EV chargers. And like I said, I think those are more of band-aids. I think the option would be to phase out free charging offers as soon as possible. I think the industry is bound to go this way either way. We're using it to sell EVs. It does work, but charging credit programs that have a fixed amount given to EV customers when they buy or lease an EV is is better. I think giving them $400, $500, whatever to use on EVgo or EA, what have you, but not unlimited offers is a better option. You're still confined to a certain price point and it's still technically free, but it's not so unlimited. I think this would be the best interest for EV drivers to be a healthier part of the community, for EV charge point operators to avoid fraudulent unlimited charging, which I didn't even talk about here, but which definitely happens to encourage a better environment and behaviors at their charging infrastructure and for automakers too, who can have happier EV owners who will still be incentivized to buy your EV as long as you're, you know, making a competitive EV from the ground up, but instead offering charging credits or at-home charging offer or both, why not? And then of course, yeah, building that EV that folks want to buy. So far right now, I think the solution is planning ahead and today we still might be stuck with ID4s clogging up Electrify America stations. Let me know what you think. Did you think that this stat was going to be so high, actually double the time? 78 whole dang minutes. I think it's pretty shocking when you think about it. I know we all have those stats about the screen time on our phones, and this doesn't seem too, too different. Voluntarily sitting somewhere, just squeezing out every kilowatt hour you can. Maybe you can make the best out of it, of course, yeah. But I say, hey, let's use our time a bit more wisely, treat our EVs a little bit better, and get a move on. Let me know what you think. Thank you for tuning in with me today to cover this topic. I will catch you next time on the Out of Spec Podcast.